So launching the Pixel 10 was not enough for Google. No, they decided to drop Android 16 QPR 2 Beta 1 on the same day. So here we are talking about software updates on Pixel Day. But yeah, let's get it. Quickly do me a solid though and tap that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'd hate for you to miss out on all of the fun coming over on the channel in the coming months. So yeah, do that and join the crew. Cheers. A little bit of housekeeping first though. This is technically the next update coming to Pixel phones. Well, the next next update. It's a preview of the December Pixel drop. So while it might not be laden with as many updates as QPR1, which is coming very, very soon, it's worth bearing all of that in mind. So let's get into what's new or what's been added. Spoiler alert. There isn't a ton here, but there is some really cool stuff brought in from the Android Canary builds, plus some new stuff of its own. So yeah, let's get with these new things right away. So as soon as you launch the home screen in Android 16 QPR 2 Beta 1, there is a new remove button or quick shortcut that will appear when you use the app pop-up long press menu. Basically that little menu that appears here and gives you extra toggles for specific applications. You can still drag the app to the top of your home screen and remove the tab or use that remove tab up there. But this is a lot quicker if you want to delete a few home screen apps in a row. There is still no option to select multiple apps at a time. So this is a baby step in the right direction and it probably will help you out there a lot. Staying on the home screen though, there is a huge change to the widget panel with a featured tab now appearing here and a browse option as well. So the featured section is a tab on the left and this is just going to fill you with widgets or give you options to fill your Pixel home screen with or at least what it thinks are going to be useful or of interest to you. Mine does seem to be completely random at this point in time, and it doesn't really always stay the same whenever I launch this. I'm only seeing three widgets here as well, like the old version that sits at the top of the widget panel. Just swipe to the right to go to the usual widget section that you probably used to. This is now housed under the toggle browse. This has a new M3 chevrons and tabs as well. So when you expand these out, it's practically identical to the old selector but just update a little bit to fit better with Material 3 expressive design principles. We're also now finally seeing work put into place for custom icons in the wallpaper and style application. This is giving you three options when you do opt for this. There is default, which is uh, no changes at all. Minimal, which is the brand new name for themed icons or appears to be the new name for themed icons, plus create. And that has a little icon or a little kind of a magic wand icon maybe we'll be able to use ai in the future trying to tap this or use this or create an app icon doesn't work at this point in time you get a little to toast pop-up message that says the app isn't installed but it is worth noting when you use the minimal option or the themed icons you might now notice that some non-themed apps will get forced themed with this enabled so on my home screen you can see uber here has been hastily themed and well I'm not going to lie to you, I think it looks absolutely awful at the minute. I'm guessing this will work better as it gets built out and it actually works better with your home screen icons. But yeah, it looks promising. doesn't look all that great at this point in time, but I'm very excited to see where Google takes the theming for our home screens. Another tiny little thing I noticed when playing around with this is that it definitely seems like more colours are available from, or at least been pulled from wallpapers on my phones. I'm definitely seeing a wider array of colour swatches to choose from. But yeah, it's tough to fully know sometimes it's all about that specific framing of a wallpaper on your home screen, but it definitely seems like there are more options, at least on the wallpapers that I set on my phone. I think the biggest option here by far is the long awaited lock screen widget. And this is working here in this build. So hallelujah, just head to settings, lock screen and toggle lock screen widget. Now, when you lock your phone, just swipe over to the right and your lock screen will show a new section called hub mode that will pop up. That's probably familiar to any of you out there who've used a Pixel tablet over the last few months. Unlock this and you can practically add any widget from your phone to this new section. It says it will only work when your phone is charging, but that's not true. It's working here without this phone being charged. Gemini and a stock ticket or currency tracker were automatically added to my device by default. Don't know why that was, but if you long press this, it tries to give you the option to resize widgets. It's sort of broken right now as it doesn't work for every single widget on your home screen or your lock screen as it were, but they can get stuck as well. So just drag these around, reorder them, play around with it. You can set one big widget on a page of its own if you really wanted to. And I think that's a great start, but this is easily the biggest addition of the lot. And I want to see this one be built out over time. I want to see a lot more work put into this because lock screen widgets are something we lost. Now we're getting them back here in Android 16 QPR 2 Beta 1. You might also notice on the lock screen here that certain clocks might not have as aggressive animations. I'd say they've been toned down a hell of a lot here. There's a lot less bounce and 
the at a glance widget itself doesn't slide in or jump around on your screen it stays pretty darn static i actually like this change because while i love animations across all of android it can sometimes get a little bit or get a little bit muddled as things jump around and back again after you unlock your device it just builds a nice set of consistency and something we want to see more of with Android 16 QPR2 Beta 1. One more thing I also spotted, but I actually want your opinion here down in the comment section is in the settings app text. And to my tired eyes, as we've been working hard at Pixel 10 content here, I think the font looks a little bit, or looks marginally thicker in sectional headings. You tell me though, cause I'm absolutely 50, 50 that it might have been adjusted to stand out better here. Maybe it's just as I say, my tired eyes, but let me know down in the comment sections below. This does look different to me. I just can't quite tell if it is that much different as it were. So getting into things that are technically not new but are new here in this particular build, you might know about Canary, well, or Android Canary. This is the precursor to these QPR releases. It's a lot more regular. It's effectively developer previews, but all the time. A few things have jumped ship from previous Canary builds like the 90-10 split screen for any supported applications, which I think is really, really good. Ordinarily, the split screen layout would close or force close an application when you dragged it down to this sort of level. So you can set one application to take up what is effectively a minuscule portion of a display if you really wanted to this definitely suits bigger displays so yeah play around with it you might have a lot more fun on the pixel fold or a foldable device running this particular build as well parental controls have also jumped out into their own settings app section away from the digital well-being options i think this is just a neater way of doing things and it means you're not diving deeper into sections for the sake of it just eliminates a little bit of extra clutter and confusion and just makes it a lot easier especially have a, if you want parental controls on your device and allow children to access your phone enhanced hdr brightness controls are also here they're coming with this release well i think this is one of those that's really really nice for people who like having hdr but don't want eye searing pain as you can effectively adjust the intensity or the effect of hdr images on your phone personally i find instagram and fed threads are the biggest culprits on android but you might want to play around with this setting to find that perfect middle ground between quality and brightness of hdr images in supported applications low light mode is also here in the screensaver section that was added first in the canary release or at least the first canary release you get some controls or when it'll kick in it just gives you one option which is low light clock there's no extra options available here so hopefully we'll get more later down the line i think this only works when plugged into a charger if i remember correctly but yeah it is an option here i haven't managed to get this working or i haven't had the time to get it working but it is available if you do want to play around with it and sticking with screensavers for just a moment in this section if you happen to have any pixel watch or galaxy watch or wear os watches third-party watch faces installed on your device itself you may see this in the screensaver section we've only seen this or been able to get this to work with a third-party option called radii i'll leave a link down in the description below effectively this can be set as a screensaver you can preview that but for some reason it doesn't seem to work all that well in practice but yeah this is a really cool option and i'm hoping to see this one develop maybe we'll be able to set our watch faces on our screensavers in the coming months android 16 qpr2 beta 1 also brings about the return of the users widget which was removed in the previous qpr beta cycle just open the widget panel and it is it in its own section you can just search for this by users all this does is let you quickly switch or switch on device user profiles so nothing special it's a nice addition though it's nice to see this one get put back in but sometimes things get, get removed people get annoyed and yeah if you are running betas you do have this option at your fingertips the last two things here though in android 16 qpr2 beta 1 are the august 2025 patch which is always nice as you're nice and up to date and secure but there's also the october 2025 google play system update so this is a little bit more future proof than any current build of android out there right now that is your lot though from android 16 qpr2 beta 1 i i would i did say at the start of this video there ain't tons but there is a little bit of cool stuff being added here definitely lock screen widgets my favorite new addition because it is going to be consolidation release after the massive massive qpr1 option which is coming in the next few months i think this is the first big ota as well for the brand new pixel 10 if you've managed to pre-order that and when those devices go out so yeah, once those start shipping, you will have Android 16 QPR 1 pre-installed on those devices. And it is expected in early September for other Pixel phones, at least based on previous timelines. Tell me now what you think, though. I think 100% or I can 100% see these QPR releases getting really confusing as they go by, as Canary builds are effectively now starting to take center stage for these little tiny changes that we see on a regular basis. It's going to get messy very, very quickly, but... 
thanks for joining me. It has been a busy, busy day for us here at 95Google. But until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you in a bit.